you're sitting down with your wife, laying back. She got her long hair, skin glowing. She's just giving you a back rub. And all of a sudden, your son walks into the room. He comes up to you and says, oh, Baba, I didn't see you there. I thought that was uncle. And you look at him and you're like, uncle, who's uncle? And he's like, uncle comes over every day when you're at work. And him and mama go into the room and, you know, they're studying <laughs> or they're playing board games. Imagine being in this situation right now. What do you do? What can you do? You have a kid with this woman. You have years of trust and companionship. And all of a sudden, you have nothing but resentment, regret, remorse, and just dread. If she decides to, she could just walk away with a lot of your assets, have majority of the custody over your kids. And the woman that you once thought that you knew turned out to be somebody else. Imagine how helpless you would feel. This is the reality, unfortunately, for a lot of the men that I counsel. And 99% of these cases could be prevented if you pick the right woman to begin with. Now, I'm not going to act like you could pick the most perfect woman for you and these things can't happen. Of course, they can. And the most successful proper man that a woman sees one day can be the same man that she turns on. These things happen. This is reality. And the truth always comes to the surface, but it doesn't take away from the fact that these are statistical anomalies. The best thing that you could do is pick the correct woman to begin with. And obviously, as we know, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that you can marry a woman for four things. And deen, her Islam, is the best thing that you can marry her for. Because over time, looks fade, status doesn't matter. And she's going to be the example for your children growing up. This is why today we're going to go over seven red flags in women that you must avoid when you're in the initial talking or vetting stages. This being said, make sure you let her know that you want to get to know her for the sake of marriage and you get that straight to the father too. And you keep an eye out for these seven things. Number one is going to be unwillingness to give up social media. Now, if she wants to be on social media, if she has Instagram, if she has Snapchat, if she has TikTok and Twitter, there's nothing wrong with these things. As a matter of fact, most people do. But when you tell her you don't want her on these apps because they're a waste of time and there's fitna and there's men that are probably going to hit her up, especially if she's posting on it. We know that the Baraj is mentioned to be extremely haram and I'll put the hadith up on the screen right now, inshallah, which is a woman that's displaying her beauty to non-mahram men, internet strangers, thousands of them. If she has social media, that's fine. That's not a red flag. That's probably how she found you in the first place. But if she is unwilling to delete and remove herself from social media, walk away. Simply put, do not entertain women that want to stay on social media and have this presence. They want to stay on social media, post pictures of themselves, get validation from strange men. Now, I can't tell you how to run your life. If you want your woman on social media, that's you. But if you don't want her on social media and she is unwilling to remove herself from social media, that's a red flag. Number two is going to be incorrect hijab. Now, obviously, hijab is a very sensitive topic. It's something that is a journey for many women. And I completely understand this. However, you want to make sure if you do have a requirement that she's in correct hijab, that she is observing correct hijab before you guys get married, then after. There's no woman that's going to come around and say, oh, I'll change for you after we get married. You know, I'll start covering after, you know, you put a ring on it. None of that. First of all, these rings are not even an Islamic concept to begin with. But there's no hijab after nikah. Who you marry before marriage is most likely going to be who she's going to be after you guys get married. And this is why her being in correct hijab should be for the sake of Allah and not for you. Obviously, you can encourage her, but she needs to have bare minimum standards before you marry her. Number three is going to be male friends. And just like social media, okay, that's fine. Let's say she has male friends. Let's say she's in uni. Most women today have male friends and most men today, unfortunately, have female friends. It's something that we shouldn't do. Obviously, I advise men to never have female friends. And similarly, you want to expect that your woman will never have male friends. Now, if she has male friends when you meet her, that's fine. But again, it's the unwillingness to give up these male friends that is the red flag. Men and women cannot be friends. And I'm going to make a whole detailed video on it very soon. The fact that I even have to make this video. Do not further things with any woman that wants to hold on to her male friends. Oh, just because I've known them for so long and they're not even like that or they don't even see me like that. Oh, they all they have girlfriends or they have wives. None of this. Number four is wants to be a career woman. Now, there's nothing wrong with a woman that wants to work or have income. That's fine. Islam is fine with that. But Islam doesn't allow you to have jobs that are, you know, free mixing. And, you know, you have a male boss and male coworkers that you chill out with and talk to every single day. That'll probably fire you at the drop of a hat if they need to. 
Now, obviously, there's a difference in opinion if you need that job or not. Like, if you're literally going to be out on the streets. But most women just want to do that because they're programmed, they're brainwashed. They think that the most important satisfaction that I'm going to get in life is from these corporate ladders and credentials after my name, not from being happy, being a wife and a mother. There's a video that I saw from Daniel Hikikachu and his wife, and they were basically talking about should Muslim women go to college. And mind you, Daniel Hikikachu and his wife both went to Harvard, from what I know. I think that's how they met. But it doesn't take away from the fact that all of them have discussed these shaming tactics that a lot of Muslims and people in the Muslim community use, where it's like, oh, all you do is being a mom. All you are is a wife. What do you mean all you do? Being a wife is a full-time job. Being a mom is a full-time job. It doesn't, it's not a 40-hour work week, which is simple, and you get a paycheck. It takes struggle and takes work ethic. And a lot of women know that subconsciously, which is why they willingly have this ignorance and delusion that, oh, working a job is harder and I'm contributing more to the world. This is a woman that you don't want necessarily by your side, one that's independent and kind of brainwashed. And I have nothing against these sisters. May Allah guide them to the truth. But who you marry is going to have such consequential, significant influences in the entire trajectory of your life and your kids lives so think about that before you start justifying oh it's okay it's not that bad of a job she only has to go on these work dinners once a week and all this nonsense number five is going to be does not want kids now if she doesn't want kids what are you even doing now obviously if you don't want kids yeah sure you guys might get along but ask yourself why you don't want kids a woman that doesn't want kids is a woman that is afraid of something there's some deep dark issue in her mind from either when she was a kid or something festering in there maybe she had a bad childhood maybe she has unresolved conflict from her parents but if she doesn't want kids that's screaming red flag because the most feminine thing a woman can do is to serve you and be a mother of your own kids Number five is a woman that is very masculine. She's not feminine. She's extremely disagreeable. Now, these things are red flags because Allah has made you the leader of the family and of the household. And if you are going to be the leader, there has to be a follower. There can't be two leaders. There can't be two pilots of a plane. There can't be two drivers to a car. It's not going to work. It's going to crash. And it goes without saying for a woman to rest into her feminine naturally. This energy can only happen if you yourself are in your masculine. Now, if you don't know how, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching at fightfit.com where I teach men to level up every aspect of their life, including fitness, mental health, testosterone, masculinity, and I help you tap into the energy that you were destined to have. But simply put, today, it's not enough. There's men that are in their masculine. They're doing nothing wrong, yet the woman just can't be feminine and just can't be a nice, caring, smiling, agreeable woman. Like, is that so much to ask? And this doesn't mean you can't have a woman that just talks back or every now and then likes to have a little bit of a, a back and forth, likes to be witty. That's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That just gives her personality and flavor and makes her human, especially some of the foreign women. They're going to be spicy. You got to expect that. And you got to tame her. However, nothing justifies bad behavior and disagreeability. Number seven but definitely not least, is going to be dishonesty. If you catch her lying about little things, what makes you think and believe that she will not with bigger things, more serious things? Now, this dishonesty could be things like her not keeping secrets, as in she runs her mouth, and things that are private things in your marriage. She tells other women and complains and nags about you to her family or friends. This is a big red flag. It could be her lying to you about simple things. If you know these things about her, don't think that these things are being revealed to you just by chance. If it's not too late and you do have a compulsive liar, move on. Now let me know if I missed anything. And if you guys have any other video topics for the future coming up, like the video, share it with somebody that's single. And inshallah, we'll talk soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.